welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hello. I'm coming from you. I'm coming from a basement today. So I apologize for the light. <laughs> there might be a light. There might be a delay, but it's okay. We are making it work here on the skating lesson. This is where we discuss figure skating and all things subjective sports. We've got a lot going on, a lot of different little activities happening. And first thing we need to discuss is that in exactly one week, Jonathan will be on the worst cooks of America. Jonathan of Tanya Walker's Harding fame. Walk us through the worst cooks in America. Tell us about your 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 TV fame. Well, they had originally invited both Dave and myself onto the show, but Dave couldn't get out of work for that time period. So I was the one that was like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so I definitely um, cannot cook. So they definitely contacted the right person. And you'll see it's... I'm terrible. I'm absolutely terrible. Cooking seems like something I should be able to do, but I cannot. So you'll just have to tune in and see how much I suck at it. And when <laughs> is this Sunday. airing? What, what is our schedule, our viewing schedule like? So I don't even know when it airs. I know it's on August 4th, which is next Sunday on the Food Network. I don't even know what this time is great. or Big how. Little Lies just ended. I have my Sundays are, they are more open. So this is good. They're available. Me. Yes. Okay. okay, great. I like, I thought like, am I going to watch with people? And no, because you know, you never know how they edit this sort of stuff. So I could be made to be very rude. I could be made to be very effeminate or, but let's be honest, maybe I'm a little bit of both anyway, but, um, so we'll see, we'll see what angle they go, but I'm definitely going to watch it by myself and hope that. I can just process those emotions quickly and then be able to talk about it. It's okay. It's okay. Do you get a screener okay. ahead of time? No, we definitely do not. When you're on The Real Housewives, I hear that you get a screener ahead of time so that you can write a blog. So when you're on that show, you'll get a screener. Oh, good to know. I need to branch out. I need to yes. get up in Bravo's business then. Yes. Okay. So definitely hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell for all the notifications because we will be discussing Jonathan's star turn. Okay. On okay. all of his reality <laughs> program as well as the figure skating. So you'll, you'll see it all here. And my mother is very into the fact that you're doing social media more now because she likes to keep up with what everyone is doing. She says yeah, you have I'm a very trying. nice voice. Um, she would she likes the cute piano player. She would okay. like to get you to get her free tickets for one of your shows. She would prefer perhaps a musical. Like you okay. know, opera is in a foreign language that requires work for her, and there's like sometimes... to read the surtitles. Yeah, okay. and there's too much okay. singing, but she likes singing with a, with a nice story. So maybe okay. like a Dear Evan Hansen. Could you do something like that? Oh, okay. Yeah, a real uplifter like that. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> really Wicked. Proud, proud I don't think she's seen Wicked yet. Something, you know, maybe something she wants to see, hasn't seen. She likes okay. Broadway. Can you do that? Okay. We'll, we'll do like a nice old school Broadway. Some old legit like Rodgers and Hammerstein kind she of stuff. She legit like called me and was like, I want to see Jonathan perform. But it was when you, she were, should. When you were mentioning Ethel Merman on your social media and stuff like that. Like Debbie was yeah. there for it. Okay. Yeah. That was, I mean, that was my girl. That was my Tanya before I knew Tanya, you know? Okay. <laughs> Same kinds of gals, if you get my yeah. draft. So, artistically you know, the opera, speak. that's a lot of... Italian That's a big singing. first step. Yeah, so we'll we'll get her in a different way. Yeah. We can do this, Debbie. Okay. We got you. All okay. right. <laughs> well, I made you branch out because there's a lot going on. And you know, I like all things subjective sports. And because you're going to be a token reality show gay, I think that you need to become more <laughs> versed in other subjective sports. You know, no, well is, round me, Dave. Yeah. yeah. It is for okay. my soul that you, you know, you don't always get all my references. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so let's start with diving. Because, you know, okay. I don't think people know, I love diving, and I especially love when Cynthia Potter, American treasure, commentates diving. She teaches what, us- What's that? She just never stops talking, and we learn from Cynthia. We absorb. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, I told Jonathan to watch it, but I didn't trust that he actually would. So I watched <laughs> it and filmed my TV as I was watching it and then just sent him clips. Cause then he And I in. watched that today on the airplane and I could hear then your commentary where you correctly guessed every single diving score without well, fail, Dave. I got one wrong, but it was okay. I, I was well, you like, were close. You were yeah. close. Yeah. But it, look, we've learned from Cynthia Potter. 
over the years, okay? Uh, look, we can't have too much splash. You don't want to be sliding past vertical. We want a right. nice tight tuck. She doesn't like a crow hop on the springboard. You were talking about that crow hop. Yeah, and that was news to me. But she's the dick button teaching us about laybacks, but in the pool. Yeah. So I met her when I interned for NBC because the trailers for gymnastics and diving, like diving slash swimming, were next to each other. And I got to meet her and she's like, Southern Texan, and she was like, usually people think I'm a bitch. She was very excited that I was like so thrilled to meet her. So. That you were actually learning about this sport you were watching. And yes. you, she was modeling critical thinking and, and helped you enjoy the sport that much more. Yes. So there's that really young boy. He seems too young to be diving. Like I have to be honest, Dave, because I've been teaching at some conservatories and stuff and you have to do so much like, is it Title IX or Chapter, I don't know, whatever. I was like, I'm not supposed to see, like, someone that age in a Speedo. Like, something feels inappropriate. Well, he's he's particularly diminutive. So, yeah, he finished yeah. fourth place overall, and he was doing lower degree of difficulty. So, where other people would be This doing, is the Ukrainian. This yes. is the Ukrainian diver, who is only 13. Yes. yes. Alexei Sereda. And... I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I, I don't know. You know, the Russians, they're not going to be happy regardless. But anyway. Exactly. <laughs> he has very beautiful execution. He just does lower degree of difficulty. So he was getting those GOEs in diving. You know, he was working. Which was smart. Yeah. yeah. I. Good. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But let's talk Who about. Who is my mustache boy? Yes. So David Dinsmore from the U.S. has a mustache that I wasn't sure if it was more of an 80s porn mustache or more of a Mario, of like Mario Kart, if that Both kind of... hold great nostalgia to me. So I think that I was there. <laughs> I didn't understand the mustache. I liked the Speedo. I didn't under, yeah. He was a little bit messy, but an interesting character. Yeah, his was the least effective dive, actually, as, as a complete layman. It, just something about it didn't seem as slick as maybe some of the others. And didn't Tom Daly used to be twinkier? He's, like, beefy these days. They're always having articles about him and his husband being on the different apps, and there's always a little bit of scandal there, which is what we like in a good Olympic contender. Right. Yes. Bring us into diving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, he is beefy and diving very well, but he... He biffed. He was second in prelims, third after the semifinal, and he really bombed a couple of his dives. Cynthia was quite upset about some of his dives. She was blaming time off, but he's competed quite a bit this year. So I don't know. She, she wasn't happy with his diving. Now, I have to, I mean, admit my complete ignorance about diving in general. So their season, are we, are we seeing them at the beginning of their season? Like compared to the Pan Am games in general, I'm unfamiliar with. And so if, if you could speak for just a little bit yes. about where it falls within the gymnastics season and its importance there versus where it might fall so in diving, another... So diving, we're watching the World Championships, right? And okay. diving, we were watching on the Olympic Channel. And the World Championships for diving just took place with swimming and they were in mid July in. Oh my God, Dave, those were not dives from the Pan Am games. No, there will be dives from the Pan Ams next week. We're oh, practicing for next concerned. summer. So the okay. Pan Am games are a mini Olympics for our North and South American countries. So we have a lot of Latino flavor, which makes it a lot of fun. And that's why there are skates like roller skating that are so effective which our American friend John Birchfield won a silver medal. We'll get to that. So anyway, with diving, they just had their worlds and they're going to be here and then they'll be ramping up for the Olympics. Um, okay. With gymnastics, it's a little bit on a different time schedule because their worlds are October-ish. So they are competing now to make the worlds and they are okay. ramping up. Okay. And, and diving is more similar to... Um, well, roller skating is not an Olympic sport, but they just had their world, big world event, and then they were having the Pan Am Games after it. So, yeah, it's all... Okay. Well, you're going to be so well-versed by the Olympics, Jonathan. You are going to know all the guys in Speedos. Are you enjoying them more? I Okay, so both divers that were 1-2 from China, both flipping amazing, Yong Jian and Yong Hao, one was like kind of like beefy and very dominant. And the other one had beautiful toe point. I preferred the silver medalist. I thought he was beautiful. He wasn't doing as much difficulty as Yang Jian. Yang Hao, I thought was just stunningly gorgeous with 
Even you were going GOE. Yeah, was going, exactly. I mean, he was getting all those tens. Cynthia was even agreeing with the tens. Yeah. She was having no issue with giving tens in the dives. She was... Yeah. Do you notice that, like, when a dive is bad, she, she's actually quiet for a while? Like, when it's real bad, <laughs> she's like... Like, she's got... She's... How do I word this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had I had questions like when they start in those handstands, yes. the the positions and things like that. Like for instance, we saw one kind of do a quick balance check, oh, they but did then not hold it. But then he held it for such an extra long time. I was like, is he trying to delay or prove that he does have it solidly? Like this is a sport I need to like really do some research on. I think in order to understand it's what merits. It's quite simple it. though. I have to say to okay. judge once you get like what a good dive looks like. Okay. Very intuitive. Now the numbers and what they call the different skills and they have different like 4053C, you know, it's, it's three numbers and then a letter. Flipping confusing. I'm sure okay. all the diving people are like, what do you mean? It's vi it's like, you know, it's like the, the library, you know, the Dewey Decimal System. It's, it's like amazing. Yeah. Okay. A little, it's a little extra, but okay. a fun sport. So. Okay. Yeah. And we have Cynthia to, to guide us. This is what we yeah. really need Johnny Weir and Tara to be doing. To telling us about the too much splash that is happening. So. Teaching us what to look for because we then suddenly become so much more engaged as viewers instead of just knowing where they go to school and what their Cynthia favorite breed can of dog is. make you a diving expert by the end of an hour and a half broadcast. You're like, I am good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I understand what I'm looking for. She even, she like dissects toe point, degrees of toe point that she likes. I feel so educated by the end of her. She showed that one diver who was flexing their toes when they went by the platform and then stretching them out. And she did not like that, John. Yeah, she, I, when she said something that minute, I was like, wow, okay. I need to be looking at these divers. <laughs> like, maybe not on a phone that's a video of my TV. Like, you know, maybe, yeah. But, <laughs> but so, it has inspired me to pursue it further. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's a lot of fun. And the, the personalities are good because they're repetitive. They stay in diving for yeah. a long time. So... But yeah. let's, let's talk about the gymnastics because, you know, the USA girls love to win gold medals and that's where we come in. And I've tried to get into like gymnastics that. for a yeah. long time, Jonathan, but I made yeah, you It's watch. not a resistance to it. It's, it's just sort of a, I know how much I have to learn about it. You know what I need? Like a magic memories on ice, but for gymnastics. They have it. <laughs> oh, okay. More on that. We'll, we'll discuss it's called it called Gymnastics Greatest Stars. It's on YouTube. Okay. So. Like that sort of stuff. I just, I, I enjoy what I'm seeing, but I know like when I first started watching skating way back in the day and before you even know the difference in the jump entries and things like that, it's just such more of a broad appreciation for it. Yeah. Whereas the more you really learn about the moves and when I was watching you watch the gymnastics, like I saw um, Morgan's hand all the way on the side of the table mm -hmm. Which and I thought like, oh, that's bad. And you gasped the minute you saw it. And I was, it, it, it requires that kind of knowledge ahead of time. Yeah. They're not supposed to do that. So, <laughs> well, I mean, that much I knew. <laughs> I think gymnastics is fun because, you know how in skating, we've picked Olympic teams a couple of times, right? And skating fans are still, and skate skaters, like those who are, are very uncomfortable with this, right? It makes them very emotional, especially the skating only fans. Like right. they're still posting photos of Mariah crying in 2014. There's there's like justice for Ross Minor people. And then right. there are others who watch bolt sports that were like, of course Ross Minor wasn't going to the Olympics. He was a non-factor forever. What are you talking about? Right. Mariah right. was out of shape and didn't have a coach in 2014. Like what are we talking about that she would go? Right. 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 So I think that that makes this fun when you strategically start to pick. And I know that you th you were telling me that you thought that Leanne Wong really stood out to you when you were watching. Yes. This. Yeah. I thought she, mm -hmm. again, as a, as an outsider here, yeah. it, there was something very elegant about it. She is. And then, then you're almost afraid to have an opinion sometimes. Because I know in skating, when I'll watch it with people who don't normally watch, their observations are so strange to me at times. Don't worry about that. You have enough knowledge, Sean. Okay, that it, okay. <laughs> I always tell you, it's the same sport. It is. Dave, am I enough? Am I enough, Dave? You're enough, I watch Jonathan. It? <laughs> okay, are you thank getting, you. like, skating, diving, gymnastics? It's really the same thing. It's just, like 
degrees of medium that are different, right? Yeah, well, I just, I, I lose my anchor because what I do know about is not really prominently featured in those other sports, so, <laughs> but it is in skating. So yeah. this is fun because, so Morgan Hurd won the world championships the year that Simone Biles took the year off. In 2017, she had won three world titles in a row in the all around, then she won the Olympics, and then she took a year off. Morgan wasn't supposed to win those world championships. Reagan Smith had won the preliminaries, and when they went into the finals, she got hurt in the warm-up. Morgan wound up winning by a hair, but she, she enjoyed the attention. And then when Simone came back, Morgan Heard was really salty about the attention that Simone was getting, and they had words on social media. And it was all sorts okay. of passive-aggressive remarks. And then, okay. and it's like, there's this podcast, Jim Castic, and like, the host is like this really big soapbox and they want everyone to love each other. And because USA Gymnastics is having all sorts of legal concerns, you know, they have a new, Tom Forrester is basically the new Marta Caroli, right? And he is the one that's picking the teams and in charge of that. And he's much more of a politician than Marta was. Like Marta would just pick her team and like there was no real discussion. No one, and you could see Tom is playing the likability game. He wants the internet to people like him. He wants to keep his job. He, you know, he never really, he's always been a national expert in coaching, especially like on the uneven bars, but he's never really had that star athlete. So he's also enjoying his moment in the sun. Like he is really no But what a loaded time to have it. I mean, I think, I think it must be such a confusing time in leadership there to, to promote in a positive way out of such a negative image. But it was, it was interesting when you always go back to what it, it's about, mm-hmm. like watching these gymnasts and sort of as for me to see in the different um, apparatuses, is apparatus. that is that the right term? Yeah. Okay. Um, like to see Morgan and to see Reagan and to see Leanne or how, yeah. how do you say? Yeah. It? Okay. Um, and, and Cara, 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 Cara. And it's Riley, not Reagan. Reagan was the one that got injured. Yes. Uh, sorry, Pete, our no. words. Uh, no, Ronnie Robertson. Will, there's an okay. annoying fan who will write, you know. Okay, I'm fair here. enough, fair enough. Okay, but like getting to see these girls' personality come through and how they do on these things, it's it was a nice way to forget all that garbage. Yes. And just I kind of see these different girls fighting to be the best in their sport. It, it, was, it was pretty fun to watch. Yeah, and, and here forget the Simone other. and one of the other girls, Grace McCallum, chose not to compete here. They have the national championships coming up in about two weeks, a week to two weeks. So they are, they're trying to peak at the right time, not get injured and do that. And a lot of the girls here are proving themselves. So Riley McCusker mm-hmm. was a junior gymnast in 2016 and she had only been a junior for a couple of months. She became a senior and they put her in a big international meet known as the American Cup. And she bombed, like almost killed herself on some of the events. She had like falls from beam where she could have seriously hurt herself. And that was on a big stage. And she's kind of been really shaky on and off since. Like she's got a lot of talent. She's a very beautiful gymnast. But then she also has a tendency to F up. So they definitely are trying, her coaches said they're trying to put her out there and just make her comfortable with competing. And they're trying to work through. Get the numbers up. Yeah, just more exposure. Do it, do it, do it. I think that's smart. So the fact that they started on Beam, Beam is the toughest event to start on because it's so narrow and it's such a pressure event. The girls were all a little bit tighter. She did heat here. She did that beautiful bar routine. Now, her coach is a personality, Jonathan. She okay. um, she always wears black leggings on television, skin tight, always with a thong. And with the HD NBC cameras, you can always see it. <laughs> Many other coaches wear like track pants. Like she definitely wants to be seen. She's always wearing the same outfit. Clearly someone has pointed this out to her and she has an assistant who looks, they definitely have like the fake tan, the nails, they're from Jersey and she's very confident. And in a lot of the documentaries, she talks about how great she makes her gymnast. So she has a little bit of an ego. Like she knows she looks good. And what else we like in an Olympic coach, she has a scandalous backstory, Jonathan. I expected nothing less. <laughs> so when she was a collegiate gymnast at NC State, she held a party at her house where they lived, where they sold, like, they, it said that she sold malt liquor to underage kids. So basically, she must have had a party at her house where they charged a cover, right? And all the underage right. kids came, and, like, that's how they 
made money and paid for booze. But in addition to, and then they wound up getting caught because in addition to that, someone pulled a gun like at the party with across the street. Oh my god! And someone got shot and killed. So then the girls who threw the party wound up, um, you know, getting Yeah, charged. if you supplied the alcohol that later intoxicated someone who decided then to murder someone else, it all comes back to you legally. Oh my gosh, how, what a nightmare. You can <gasps> Google it. Okay, I'm just telling you, oh my it's gosh. great. We love this, oh. right? Like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We like a girl okay. with a backstory. It makes her so much more interesting, right? Okay. <laughs> Remember that Whoa. time at Lake Placid Skate America when that one Russian boy, like, got super drunk after he skated poorly, and he, um, it was 2009, Skate America, he wound up taking someone's car and joyriding it, and yes, then crashed I do it. Remember this. And yeah. then later, they wouldn't pay for him to get a lawyer. And then he might have been gay porn. Anyway, it was super entertaining. Andre Lutai. Like, who knew? Like, yeah, it was you great. did. <laughs> it was great. I, I had a quick question for you about Riley. Yes. When she was on the beam. So when they do those, is it wolf turns? Wolf turns. Like, they look like sit spins. Yes. Yeah. So I'm curious to get your take on what the arms are doing. Is are, are their arms during a wolf turn primarily to keep them balanced, or I is think there it's an to ideal generate position? the rotation in the beginning? It helps generate, and then it helps balance you. Yeah. So should is it supposed to hit certain aesthetics? Like for instance, um, like if I looked at her leg, I was completely impressed, and it was a bit chaotic in the arms. But I didn't know if maybe that's just what happens when you do those. They deduct a little bit for the arms. It's more about the leg okay. and the torso. So, but the arm, okay. I mean. Look, she's a lot. A lot of people hate these wolf turns. They think that they're ugly, and they there's a thing in gymnastics that's called code whoring, okay. which means that you're just like using the code too much to your advantage. To oh, we know points. about that. Yeah, yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, and like like a Zagitova, where she backloaded, right? Like in gymnastics, yeah. that's like doing a triple wolf turn to a double wolf turn. Difficult, right. but kind of abusing the code, overusing certain skills, getting cheap points, basically. Okay. But Riley is pretty good at them. It's not as offensive as others who do it. Not anyone's real favorite skill. So anyway, it was interesting to watch her. But I, I found it interesting here with Tom Forrester that Morgan Hurd was a top gymnast of the past. Leanne Wong had a good outing at the U.S. Classic a couple weeks ago, which is how they picked this team. And there were certain girls who were in contention. And he, you know, they can't all do all events. But because Morgan Hurd was a star in the past, she didn't have the best outing at a recent event. And he put her on all four events and not Leanne Wong. And then he put Kara Eker on all four events. And she's not as strong. But Morgan seems very injured or slash she had an elbow injury coming back. She doesn't look good. And they're all something looked very off. I mean, something as easy to spot as that hand yeah. almost sliding right off the table. Which and you know that been... podcast, they're all behind her and they love Morgan Hurd because Morgan Hurd has glasses. She she's into reading Harry Potter and books like they are, and she likes old school gymnastics. So they the fans have really projected a lot of their feelings onto her, like she's one of them. And but really, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Yes, but they really love her like more than her gymnastics really exudes. Like she's nice, but she's not exquisite, right? But they act like right. she's, and then they call her Morgie Boo, which I find extra creepy. Yeah, like real creepy. Like yeah. And I mean, I mean zero um, offense by what I'm about to say, but she has a unique eyebrow situation mm -hmm. that almost seems cartoonish. Yes. Like if um, a cartoon was going to be angry or quizzical. Yeah. So, and and already, do you find when they do these vault runs, like yes. the, the run leading up into the vault, it's always, you know, slightly Awkward. odd looking because what a strange thing to have to get ready yes. to do in such a short distance. Her run in particular seemed peculiar to me, she but maybe that's just how it her looks. legs go like out to the side, kind. Of. Yes. Yeah, it was a bit like that, and then sure enough, the minute she took off, she went down one side, and I didn't know she's, if she's looking if rough. you can. See, yeah, it just looked maybe like Riley's she wasn't a little in bit blonde, face. right? Like yeah. she's a little bit blonde and mm -hmm. skittish. Morgan is just look, not looking, but she's going to be in a show that's going to be on the Olympic Channel where they're following her throughout the year. So we'll have a chance to really get to know her she's a fan favorite okay. people really like her so they're probably going to hate us for saying this but jonathan 
we're just here to speak the truth. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I if, would. Totally if I called you Johnny Boo, it would be creepy, right? Like it you would, would be creepy, Dave. <laughs> like that's it. And like a, Martin, a bunch of overweight boy. fans calling you Johnny Boo. Like that's yeah. weird to me. You know. Like, yeah. That's... Well, yeah. It seems patronizing actually to me, but maybe that's because I'm not a young gymnast. But I mean, I think. We don't really have that in skating where it's someone is like a true fan of the sport through and through in its history versus just through its current like current the Han version. you die hard fans or something. Yeah, yes. like these people you were saying don't know Chen Lu or don't know wow. 94, let alone Linda, let alone Janet, let alone yeah. Belita, let alone Sonia, all those. And know. then they're like, you hate Trusova. I'm like. Hate is not the right word there. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, interesting. I, I would talk I think fans would totally get behind someone who is like a skating fangirl but also competed. They would. They should try it. Yeah. Okay. They should Yeah. It's like when Dick Button back in 2014 told all the skaters that they should get on YooHoo and Google old <laughs> and look up old videos of skaters. But it's true. Like, and Megan was a little bit that way when she was doing those ISU videos, who invented that jump and like giving the fun history lessons. It endears you because it's so relatable. But, yes. yes. But you have to hit. You have to hit, not you miss do. the table. Yeah. You okay. do. Um, anyway. I like Morgan, but I don't, I'm not obsessed, but the fact that the fans are so creepy about her makes me kind of like her less. Yeah. There are a I lot. Get it's a, it's yeah. awkward to me. It's like a cringe factor. Well, and it's interesting. It's them, though. It's not her. It's them. Right. Like, She's like the innocent victim in that yes. fandom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, often I think Hanyu the same way. He gets yes. these staunch defenders, but Hanyu never says any of this ridiculous stuff, just yes. the fans do. Um, but with Morgan's, um, some of her routines in particular, I couldn't describe them to you. It's like a little certain bit robotic, were... but she has a pretty leg. Like those girls from Gage, the Leanne, the Finnegan, uh -huh. and Eager, they all have this beautiful choreography that's very over the top. And it kind of feels like Morgan is imitating that, but it's not through her whole body. body. It's either just from the waist to the toe or just from like the shoulder to the arm. And it's not a full Big movement. Guy. Now, the woman that has the... Yeah, it's muddled. Yeah. Now, so Al Fong is the one from Gage. Now, he killed two gymnasts in the late 80s, early 90s. He is in Little Girls in Pretty Boxes. He was a nightmare. I did and read that book. Yeah. He married yeah. this woman, Armine Baratien. Unclear if she married him for a green card or not. But anyway, they teamed up. She lives in Missouri with him. They have a child. They randomly had a child. She was long in the tooth by this point. We were all shocked that she was pregnant. She is known for over-the-top choreography and exaggerating her personal backstory a little bit, but she has that really fabulous hair with a curious color, and she is the one right. who is... She's really responsible for reinvigorating his career, and she is really behind all of these girls. And okay. fascinating figure. Um, but they're clearly great technicians. Um, and he is... Yeah, they're very successful. They had three out of the five girls here. And that Leanne Wong won the American Cup this year. And she's expected to be one of the major players. If you talk to any of the college coaches who are doing recruiting, they all believe this girl is going to the Olympics. Where they think that other girls, you don't know. Because there are going to be four girls on the Olympic team next year. And Simone obviously getting in at one. And people really feel that Leanne Wong is super There was talented. something just inherently elegant yeah. and easy seeming obviously it's not but there was just something so beautiful about what she was doing instead of scrappy which yeah. is what i got from several of the other american girls here. And she's quite strong in all four events so it'll be yeah. it was interesting that they didn't put her on vault and floor i mean maybe she it's Marduk Rowley would have had her on all of the events she would have, yeah she would be so far behind this girl she would be developing her and Tom Forrester seems to be playing, like, the fairness card, this card. And he just seems to be mucking it up. And if you go back, he was, a, he was a coach where his gymnast just missed making the Olympics. Like, he just didn't know how to get it past the finish line enough. And he was so thirsty, trans openly thirsty for it. Like, he was like, oh, I want kids on that team. Like, it was about him, right. and he didn't get it. So... He's, we have things to, we have to watch Tom. We are not sure okay. if we love him in this Okay, world. TBD. TBD. Okay. Anyway, okay. 
Um, roller skating. The John Birchfield was in sixth after the short, and he did the great free skate. I posted it on our Facebook. Mm-hmm. Does he look like a short love child of like Emmanuel Sandu and Roheen to you? Almost there's a which is yeah, it's a nice combination. Yeah, like he he had a very good look, and the same thing I was experiencing when we watched the the worlds mm-hmm. is it just seems like the surface isn't big enough for them. Yes, it's too like, small. I want to. I want to be able to see them to do more because I feel they want to and are capable of doing it. And they they seem, you know, like when you see some of the skaters on cruise ships, mm-hmm. and I don't know how they're able to pull out some sort of big triple flip on a, such a tiny surface. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it felt like at this kind of level of competition, I'm sure obviously it's all regulated, blah, blah, blah. But I would just love to see them be able to just go for broke with taking up space. I agree with you. I do like when they move back and they stop. Like, they'll do a triple lutz, and then they'll, like, step back and come to a complete stop, lean back, and then, like, run forward. Yes. That open, that openness. It's the the jumps that look so funny to me, like his triple loop, which he had a difficult time with here. But um, just inherently in in the roller skating technique of it is... Can you see the Tara roller skating technique that Peggy would always harp on? The double axle like because they can't started. step up into it, giving because like the wheels will knock your knee over with it. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then in the sow cow, how you know how Tara always like put her leg low and straight, mm-hmm. and it really lift, and that's from roller skating. And yeah. one of our fans, you picked up on something when we were talking about Nicole Bobek in one of our videos. You were talking about her technique and on her flip, how she has that weird kick. Apparently, her original jump coach in Chicago was a roller skater. And there's much more... No question. That's exactly what's happening then. Yes. When we were watching, when we were watching um, Luca, it was, it was literally watching her technique. Yes. Yeah. In the okay. Midwest, there's a lot more overlap between roller and ice skating, apparently. Well, so. are you ready for this? So I was in Germany, and I did some sort of like public um, opera interview thing or something. And someone asked me about this skating lesson. No. Auf Deutsch, yeah. Um, And then of course I was like, who the hell are you? And how do you know about (laughs) skating? And it turns out he was a competitor for West Germany back in the seventies in both ice dance and roller skating. Yes. I I don't know if it was pairs or if they did some sort of roller dance they kind do of roller thing. dance that's a thing and, and he was like the entire german team of the 70s they were all in both okay that you didn't choose one or the other they just you did one in the summer and you did the other one in the winter and Amazing. i thought what a fascinating what a fascinating time that was because when you look back to 60s 70s and 80s they even had a an olympic silver medalist or something but all those german and east german pairs were really around then why is and i guess the, not doing two sports he's doing two disciplines that rebecca can learn how to skate too okay like we can get her going if if the germans can do it you know back in the 70s you can do it now come on half of the drugs these countries are giving their skaters under the table come on okay yeah and italy italy could be one of those if he did well no the the italian men are pretty strong actually right now between he would be great in the pairs he would yeah they they could use another pair just to round it out it it looks like he might not be the quadruple type he's like a full-figured man like he's right. I don't think he's had an eating disorder since the age of five to be able to pull off a quad. <laughs> like I think yeah. that he is normal. But he could throw and the lifts so. again. Lucas' yeah. lifts were incredible. Yeah, and he would yeah. bring he would bring tons of fans to the sport. I mean, he's made me love roller skating. He's <laughs> I got know. he's got the yeah. look. He's got the drama. He pulled out the cartwheel like Surya Bona Lee. He threw himself down on the ice at the dramatic conclusion to right? the event. I was all for it. So yeah. They've been delivering some entertaining programs right now. So, weirdness going on at the Minto event in Canada. We were all excited for it. It was going to be the the debut of Luba and Charlie. Until it wasn't. (laughs) Until it wasn't. Now, this is a little bit curious because we know a couple people that train their coach around there. Apparently, they've been looking like, eh, like some great things, some things that still need work. They're a new pair. Not like... They're not setting the world on fire just yet. They 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 don't have that Velozhar and Trankov like instant, instant yeah. like a rocket thing yeah. going on. They look like 
too long in the tooth skaters who are getting it together and getting to know each other, right? But there's like some very good things, some things that are being worked out. They posted side-by-side -side triple toes on his Insta story the other day, and hers was under-rotated, and apparently people were like screenshotting this and taking it, and like someone went to send it to me, and then it was taken down because her jump was not fully rotated, nice. right? Nice. And he posted on Wednesday that he was super excited to compete, and then they withdrew. This makes me think that they're not quite ready. They weren't quite ready, perhaps, to be seen. So... It was just well, weird. That, it was yeah, just, and I don't know what time her contract had, uh, had finished with yeah. Cirque and things like that. But I, they seem to start training a little bit later, maybe in the year, than other other new partnerships may have. Yeah. So, uh, it, uh, is there a rush? I don't know. Now, Mindy they was performed just as early, short but I think that was just about getting money, right? Like they needed yeah. money for training and crucial at this yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And now the Minto. Is it exclusively Canadian skaters? And are they all Canadian judges? They were all Canadian skaters, but I think there were people that maybe weren't Canadian, but they were mostly all Canadian there. Okay, like I wondered if it would have been a friendly... And then I was confused. ...judging panel for them. So Francis, who's Canadian, who skates with a Japanese girl, I went to Eccentrics with him once, and he had gotten a black eye that day. He's in the Eccentrics video that I'm in, if you see on YouTube, that we when we went there. I thought that he was representing Japan at the time, but it seems like they're representing Canada now, and I wondered if it's a different partner. Cause oh, okay. I wasn't sure. I like haven't been following his career that closely, but he was there, but they said he was representing Canada, it seemed like, so I don't know. <laughs> well, and I, this was just a short program event. Well, there was a free skate that was happening today, but I, don't, I mean, obviously, Luba and Charlie weren't going to do that. Right, right, right. And Drew and Cammy did the short program, not the okay, free. Okay, let's, let's, people said I said this a lot in some other video, but let's talk this one out, shall we? So she um, just had knee surgery. I don't understand I why they see. were here. Because yeah. they, she is not, she doesn't seem like she's ready to do triples yet. So Drew did a triple, she did a double on their side-by-side -side jumps. And then the throw was a miss, and... And Dave, the lyrics kept repeating, you you let me down, you let me down. And then there she goes on the jump, and, you know... It let us and down. Then the, the throw technique, which seemed very unusual to me, I, I, I was like, oh my gosh, you guys have got to listen to these lyrics and think about what happens if you do skate it well, or if you don't skate it well. We hope you don't skate it well, but if it does, please don't give it music that makes it uncomfortable that you're not skating well. It's like the Amber Glenn music where the singer is talking about being drunk. and like I'm like, oh, that's not good. Not good. It's an, an, why invite the comparison? When In you're the coming words, out with frizzy yeah. hair and like yeah. black, grayish, bad dress, I don't think you want to be called drunk. Yeah. N not the comparison yeah don't yeah don't do it now what i will say about kimmy and drew was the i who choreographed for them i i hate to put you on the spot Julie that way but, and now i'm gonna own this yeah i didn't mind it julie is good depending on who she works with she did that great program to them that they did to earth song a couple years ago uh, that i was obsessed with okay they're both very watchable skaters very lovely there was something fresh yeah. there was something kind of new and not avant-garde but just not yeah. the same old tired thing and i thought i was like i bet this is a julie program but i'm not generally such a fan of that material but i, I thought it really worked here and i really enjoyed it you know they all love her in canada like the ones that were i you know i liked the programs that she did for marissa and mervin and i was curious if she did mervin's program this year I'm not sure. So okay, okay, um, but yeah, I, I, maybe she's like really fun to work with, and I'm maybe I'm sure she's a great gal. Like she really just, has helped KMT because if you remember when KMT okay. was with Dylan and with the Wurtzes, yeah, there was some. If they had better content, they would have maybe surpassed Megan and Eric. If they had better programs, and better, yeah, yeah, like yeah, kind of tacky and all that Mark Pillay stuff. I was not into it, and I felt like Julie really brought out. I know that you don't like the soft rock the stuff that they do, but I thought, especially in that program where they were skipping that I was obsessed with, the mm -hmm. da, 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 I thought she brought out like a real femininity and elegance and um, joy to KMT that we never got to really see before. Mm -hmm. And I thought that she made her look like a supreme lady on the ice. And I really 
I thought that she brought out an elegance that, it's like, I always thought there was kind of like a body Ethel Merman type to KMT when she was with Dylan. That was like, it was all about yeah. strength and like, look at my left, <laughs> you know, like yeah. old school and pairs, you know? Yeah. And right. this was like, it brought out like a, um, a romance and a, a refinement. A yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. I think that she can really bring this out with certain people. So the the entire look was so delightful and wonderful and different, but still don't totally. Watch that Michael Jackson free skate that Kimmy and Drew did. Okay. But unfortunately, they're not the best competitors, so they do. Fall. Well, and that's um, it does detract because we happen to know this is really becoming maybe a thing. I'm wondering with them. At what point you're with Richard and not getting better, right? At what point do you either... Or with on? anyone and plateauing. I, I, I mean... At what point do you yeah. give it a season, move to Megan and um, Bruno in Toronto, but people from Quebec, you know, the Quebecois are weird and like they right. like their own area. But at what point do you either make a move or work with Jose Picard or work with Bruno and Megan and at what point do you go for Battle of Blades and go for a nice contract in a show and kind of bag it? Because I kind of feel like they're so watchable. They're so inherently beautiful. And Canadian pairs are only getting more and more competitive by the week. So I just yeah. think... And was it... Did, who was the psychologist you had on? Dr. Silby? Caroline? Yeah, Caroline Silby. Yeah. She, she said something that always stuck with me, um, even as it applied to me personally, but if you don't change that training process, how is the result supposed to change? Yeah. And, and that's a bit maybe where, where we're at with this team, unfortunately. I want, I want to root for them and be excited about them, but it's, it's just such a little a bit such a pleasant tough. and beautiful team to watch. Pleasant. There's something yeah. so great about them that mm -hmm. you just like want to cheer and root for them. But they're not, they just don't seem like athletes. They seem like skaters, like nice kids who skate, but they don't have, and that's not shade, but they don't seem like that gritty athlete, like I'm going to get in the mud and claw your eyes out type right. mud slinger, right. the way Megan did when she was doing those quads. You were like, she's a street fighter in a dress. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not made for figure skating, but she's making it happen. But and she's going to go farther than maybe some people who yeah. have a more natural refinement, yeah. who don't have that fighter instinct. Yeah. And that's, I think, this... Exactly. Gabby Tillman's brother is also quite a good pair skater. I was watching him. And I okay. was like, he has some talent there. So okay. Maybe the Dalemans uh, could do pairs together, John. Then maybe we could be... <laughs> The day all of them together in the same rink, like I, I, whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, okay. And apparently, um, Bruno is working with Trent and Evelyn a little bit because their coach moves oh, around a lot, okay. and sometimes they take. A, Megan and Bruno seem to be like the people that everyone's visiting to do. You know, a couple I bet, of weeks I bet here. a lot of great things are going to come out of there. Yeah. yeah, they have a great junior team, and I thought that the girl was KMT because I had heard that KMT was trying to learn a throw triple lutz, and the girl from afar kind of looks like her, and I didn't have my glasses on, and I was looking at Instagram. Watching on a little screen, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was KMT. So I wrote, I was like, good job, KMT on Instagram, and it wasn't. It was Owen <laughs> and his wife. Whoops. <laughs> Autocorrect. <laughs> I was like, KMT, I am always rooting for you. That's how you need to know. I am on Amazing. your side. Okay. Like, you're on you're on the mind. You're on the I mind. Was like, I, no, I, the I knew that she was learning it and I was like, Oh, she got it. Yes, go KMT. Not doing it yet, Jonathan. There's it's still But, it's but also still... this girl. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they they didn't have Sorry. their best outing here, but a very talented team. So but we didn't I was see intrigued. Megan here. I was intrigued by what was happening in the men uh, the yeah. here. It was um, Nick Nadeau, who I just always have a thing for because he's hairy, tall, and left-handed. Hello. Um, so, but he was another one with the lyrics. The lyrics started where it's like, we've got a drink when we feel bad, or sometimes we just have one-night stands when we feel bad. And I was Is thinking- Is anyone approving these songs, choices anymore? Yeah, does anyone listen to the words? <laughs> um, but something he does do, and this was interesting after Conrad Orsel, who I also enjoy. With the great um, hair and a talented sister. 
got to look. He's got, you know, he tried both quads. One of them went well. But the thing Nick does is he looks forward. Mm -hmm. There's this thing that happens inherently, no doubt from the training situations, where there's a bit inside thing with the shoulders or with the neck or the chin tuck because they're concentrating and they they close you off mm -hmm. this way. But I you see it when there's many of them on the rink. Of course they're doing that. Who are they selling it to? So many of these rinks don't even have any seats up there. Um, so, but some with age or whatever it is about Nick, there's just an inherent openness and projection that like gets you immediately and you're watching more closely than with other people. I find myself frustrated by Conrad because he looks like he should be a young Leonardo DiCaprio. Like he just has the looks with the great hair and everyone should be swooning for his skating. He's got the nice body line and he himself doesn't seem to believe it when he goes out to yeah. compete. And that's and that's what that insecurity, how I think it manifests. It's yeah. kind of a, oh, sorry, I'm going to focus and do my spin. Don't worry about me over yeah. here. Yeah. And he should be um, the most cocky on the ice. Like, isn't should... that how it always goes? Yeah. yeah. He's great. So. Yeah. He just... It was an interesting competition. It was. Um, but let's talk about Skate Detroit, because Skate Detroit, I had a lot of fun watching. Even I have a new favorite. Who's your new favorite? Um, a young woman in the Paris event named Emily Chan. Emily Chan. I and was like, wait a second, Jonathan. When I told you to watch her, what what did you say? I don't know. Oh, I I have to be honest. I was unfamiliar with her skating. Yes. You were like, oh my gosh, she was one of my favorite juniors. Well, like, she was. In, she's one of the juniors from the late tops, right? It was her and Vivian Lee before Vivian Lee went to Raphael and was obviously out, Vivian. I know of and has put seen out to much pasture. Fun. We never saw her again. Emily Chan should have been doing Paris ten years ago because the harder jumps were never happening, and then they finally got her a clue. And you know who her partner is? That boy. Well, this is what that boy. Sebastian, who was the one who was really good in the Mishigi dancing video. Remember, he was in the front and he was so good at all those moves. And we were like, oh, who is he? Like, now we know. Well, so, so I'm intrigued by this. They had great jumps. Yes. She, she has wonderful presence and extension. Yes. She was like coming out of the screen and skating towards me. And he was, it's interesting now that you tell me he was that guy in the dance video because he didn't quite. Um, have that same amount of presence, but maybe it was difficult or it seemed com competitive with her her natural projection, her this extension. Is about her. Ex this pair <laughs> is about her exquisiteness. Her oh love, my God. Her beauty. And like the, the only time I really unfortunate, he detracted a bit in the lifts, mm -hmm. I felt. Yeah. Um, and he did fall on the triple toe, didn't he? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and then the throw, she kind of, Say like I felt like this is the girl who's going to make it happen. I was thrilled to see this. I think that there's I'm, there's something yeah. here. Yeah, I don't know if we need to stay with these coaches, but who? Yeah, I couldn't see because the way the camera angles were worked, you could only occasionally see a Todd Sand or a Delilah or something yeah. sort of eke out. But um, who who is she with? I think they're with the lay tops still, right? Oh, okay, the, still okay. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, great a part of the Tejas community. But I have to say, I, so I was watching Mervyn and Olivia. Mm -hmm. And remember, we'd seen great things from them on Instagram. And then they really had a, not a very successful Nationals, right? But I have right. to say that watching them here, they went for side-by-side -side triple flips. But they have beautiful things. Like, Olivia did a beautiful back spiral into a throw and it was super beautiful and I think it was a th her throw triple lutz that she did that into. There's a lot here that's great. The lift positions, Olivia's still new to pairs and it looks like those still need to be worked the, out. The short program lift was particularly awkward. It, it, it just looks uncomfortable. Still. Yeah, like she needs to work on that but there's other just like a lot of the transitions and the basic skating they have a really nice look and vibe and matching to them. Like they worked with Jenny and Todd and they've been working with other than just the Bruno and Megan. And they seem to have more of the pair John Nixness to them that Jenny and Todd could give them. Yeah, right? that like cohesive they, thing. Yeah. Like in the opening movements of the short in particular, just the lines they had together were big, beautiful, matched. But then I was surprised because like I thought there were death spiral issues a yes. couple of times and the spins were a little funky. But you're right, the, the main um, stroking and line 
lines in general were well matched and well executed. And you can tell they get along. It's weird watching him with a partner that you know that there's not like this tension where it's like a will they or won't they punch each other or sleep together because there was always that explosive energy with him and Marissa where you knew that there was like so much like fire and friction and... We established that wasn't here because in their way to the opening pose, I think they only did about 300 hand slap variations. Yeah. Like they, they were playing patty cake for like the first 10 seconds of their time it's out there. such a different vibe than when he was with Marissa. Like there's none of that. Now, what do you recall about the relationship with the partner when he was representing Japan and had the bronze at Worlds? It was fine. Yeah, it was, just, it was a non-tumultuous situation. Yeah, okay. like I just, I think it was fine. Um, okay. But Marissa and he had <laughs> whoa. It just didn't work, I guess. I mean, okay. it just was it just screamed through the ring. Yeah, like, they and were it never was, on the same page either. From the get go, it looked like they could have had the world. Yes. I mean, it was all right there in that first short program debut at that nationals. I, we thought, oh my gosh, here we go, and then never again. I think it's it was the best. All about the journey program that they did. That was right. their moment, and it was a journey. They it did was. go on a journey. <laughs> I have to say, he is such a beautiful skater, and you can see oh, it yeah. more now. He's he points his toe through everything, like all of his little refinements. He was stunning, and he yeah. did he keep a lot of his costumes from the Marissa days? He's wearing a lot of blousey yes. things. It, yes, very very similar. Yeah, but, I mean, nothing needed to be so specific about this particular program. But did you notice, I felt like the entire Skate Detroit event was one big um, soundtrack of Grey's Anatomy where we're playing like chasing cars and we're playing all this moody music. And I felt that their free skate was moody for the whole time, but it stayed kind of moody where it didn't go anywhere. We were just... You know what it is? It's rude to an audience because you think, well, what now what do you want that audience to walk away with? Just yeah. general depression? Like... When you hear these songs in certain albums, for instance, they come at certain points. They yeah. take you there. And when you have a heartbreaking middle section to a program, it's like so devastating. But to just stay there and drone on, it, it's mundane. You want bit. it to and like pick up and there to be like drums and guitar coming in. Do you remember Ann Jensen used to call it skating while sad? Skating and it was just sad. all these singer songwriters just moaning and, you know, there and, was so much then, moaning at Skate Detroit. Yeah, yeah. And angsty looks and like, no, these problems matter. And, you know, it was, it was a little teen angst happening, but. So Amber Glenn was skating to Madeline Bailey, who's this cover artist. And she was on YouTube. She sells on iTunes. And she did a cover of one song. And I first heard her because she did a cover of Summertime Sadness by Longfield Ray, the queen of this kind of music. But This genre, yeah. And one of the fans was writing, well, Madeline Bailey only does sad songs. And I was like, well, so does skating, apparently, now. I mean, this was... Yeah, then what a good fit. <laughs> She's found her market. <laughs> I thought Amber Glenn looked pretty good here, overall. Yeah, I thought, you know, this was one of those things where at this point in the season, understandably so, it felt like the program was skating her, like she was running to keep up with it. It's an ugly bit. dress, and it's a lot of... Yeah, I think we're not where we're going to be maybe by the fall, but um, in some of the presentation. She's always leaning forward. Yeah. I, I find her entire body tilted, hunched forward. I don't mean like a rounding of the shoulders. Um, she can I mean clearly like use better coaching. Like, that is 100% clear when you see her. Like, she's so much talent, and... And that seems like an easy kind of fix. Unified. For you to not hunch and cr and crook your neck like forward like that, it would make a huge difference in her presentation mark. Yeah. In her presentation mark. In her presentation and ergo the PCS mark. I think yeah. so much more would happen. Oh. Yeah. But, okay, Kane and LeDuc here. Mm hmm First of all, it seems political that they're here. So all the teams are encouraged to these summer events to show competition readiness. However, Tara and Danny are not doing one, and neither are Haven and Brandon. So it was weird to me that Tara and Danny are actually healthy and they didn't go. There's some speculation that perhaps they didn't want to lose to other teams. You know, TJ is often considered favored by Delilah, you know, and the fact that they weren't here. And Tara and Danny are not a team that usually lasts a long time in the season. They usually have their moment, and then... and. They, we haven't seen a ton of improvement. So I'll be curious if maybe we're going to see a new Tara and Danny 
if or more of the same. Um, right. But I do think it was interesting that they weren't here. Alexa and Chris competed last week. Huge twist. It looks like they're getting back to their old selves. He did double the cell cow. It was a weird pop that he had. Well, you said getting back to your old selves. But she looks really confident. I will say. Which is important. And that was the most scary thing for me. I, you know, we make, you know, yeah. costed comments about um, the doubling of the jumps, but it's because there is so much um, adoration for her, yeah. for that talent, for that aesthetic, for this, what she stands for. And so when that kind of light got extinguished with whatever was going on this past year or so, and it was very unnerving. It because looks that's what I like. It looks yeah. like they're over the post Olympic stuff, and it just yeah. looks like they look better to me. They don't have as many transitions as they did last season, at least in the short clips that we could see. But I thought, overall, yeah, because there is no full clip, is there? It was no. just like highlights, yeah. So, but I thought that their skating overall looked back to usual, and I thought that that was. Quite encouraging, Quite actually. encouraging, because yeah. at least we have a number of U.S. pairs that can still continue to push each other. Because I think that I think Alexa and Chris will want their national title back, and I think that Ashley and Tim enjoy being national champions, and they um, will certainly be fighting for it. I mean, they went to Skate Detroit earlier than you might expect. I mean, she just got married. They haven't been training that long, and they came here. There were some good things in this program, some things they didn't like. Her triple sow cow looked like she had never done one before. So that was Yeah, I was surprised bit. if they were trying to just not do the loops anymore or Yeah, I, I mean the loops were often under rotating. And when she falls like that, she, and she's taken those kinds of spills even on the loop at times, but it's a bad it's not Pogorelia in that it seemed intended, but it, it seemed that kind of awkward of a fall where she's really splatted out in like yeah. a, a belly flop kind of thing. They're not easy falls. No. Yeah. So I don't that know. That was been. strange, right? Like, yeah. But overall, the throw Lutz, it still goes all the way up, comes down, and like she's landing it lower than Megan Duhamel ever did. And it looks like that every time. Yeah. And Elton I'm John. Just, and a bit slow. Yeah. Elton John has really helped their twist. And you just wonder why have we not worked with someone on this throw? This throw has been such a disaster. In yeah. The execution. So, I, I don't know. Um, and it seems like something a great technician could help. Mm -hmm. Because, like, even in things as silly as it sounds like, they both have these great free leg extensions. They just never matched. But they're really starting to. Like, yeah. this is a team that seems to take their development seriously. They are seeking to improve. So, it seems like an area that would garner them such huge points. I wish they would let him be the star a little bit more because he did have such star quality. Yeah. Especially in his old partnership. So. Yeah. Um, she kind of skates like an only child at times rather than really right. letting him be. A Show what he can do, which since this partnership, we've not even seen, mm -hmm. I think, a, thir a half of what he can yeah. do. So, yeah, because seeing him in balletic material is they need a Moscovina type also. If they're going to be funky and not do it the normal way, go really go there. I think yeah. if they if they really went even more funky, I do think could, that they could, should have won the short over Jessica and Brian. I thought that they were perhaps a little bit higher quality overall. Um, mm -hmm. I will say, Brian was wearing the tightest pants I think we've seen since Alexander Julin. Um, I was here for it. I was here for it, too. Yeah. I think that if Chris Kinnear wore pants like that, they would get four more PCS points domestically, six mm -hmm. internationally, because, you know, those judges yeah. are a little bit less stuffy and um, yeah. right wing. So I think that uh, those pants, I'm, I'm here for it. Brian Johnson, get Chris Kinnear in, in your pants. I think that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, I did. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, amazing. <laughs> he and Jessica it works are coming she, along. Is, she is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Jessica is yeah. is gorgeous, and I know that these things are surface and you know package material, but um, it, it really made a big difference. It, it made it easier to go with them. Um, and I, he's more muscly than I ever remember. Yeah, and you could really see those legs. Right. Muscles. I think this is not just new pants. I think this was like very impressive. He now, filled what did out I say? Those new oh, pants. he ran away. 
he talked about he bailed on the twist. Yeah. He like threw her and then walked away. That was bizarre. <laughs> was like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, wait, you're supposed to catch her and put her down and keep going with her. Wait, do you So there's do something going on in yeah. some of these twists and some of this technique. So when TJ Nynum does a twist, I don't know if you realize, but like he actually, the way he throws her up, he kind of like bends his knee and it actually makes the twist look even higher than it is. But yeah. He's not standing fully straight like you would normally see. Him no, in. then he, he goes back, doesn't he? He goes back to kind of, and yeah. bends. But Bruno Masseau also did that. Not that they, Bruno Masseau needed any help making the twist look bigger, but it does even create the illusion that the twist is bigger than it is when the guy is bending. Just watch. Notice if you start to notice that some of these men are bending their body. Helping that aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. Because so yeah. often we just watch the girl go up and we're all like, oh. But yeah. look at the guy on the ground and what's happening. Right. Well, because I will say, um, TJ in particular, no, they did have the good twist, but for instance, when TJ did the throw, mm -hmm. it was about one of the least aesthetically pleasing things I had ever seen in pair skating, mm -hmm. was the way he threw her. Yeah, he uh, needs to work more on the throw and less on the rap songs that he's releasing on iTunes. Like, let's focus on the throw. One career at a time. Let's, yeah. let's do that. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and he failed her, I thought, on the dismount of the lift as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm curious to see what happens with this team. Will they be good? Will they get a new partner? Like, what is going to happen? Yeah, or, or is what we see now what we're just going to get forever? I don't know. Delilah's invested yeah. in him. So I think, I don't, I don't think we're giving up anytime soon. So Okay. Yeah. yeah. Something, of, something, yeah, there's something that doesn't sit right with me about them as a pair for some reason. Yeah. But she's, she seems lovely. I mean, it's maybe, um, I don't know. But with Jessica and um, her partner, I thought the one of the best parts of their program was their cool death spiral. Yeah. They, 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 they walked through this opportunity. Mm -hmm. they, kind of, they kind of solidified themselves in that second group that could come in and just shake up a, a placement or two. And they did Glacier Falls last weekend, I believe, and then competed here. So... I'm actually, I don't know that they did Glacier Falls. I thought that they did Glacier Falls. Maybe they didn't. And I'm just But, but they're, in this, they're in the same training rink now as Alexa yes, and Chris, is, which maybe could also be something to help elevate them, you yeah, know? They are still doing oh. well. Um, I did think um, that maybe they could get that Skate America spot if they keep this up. Yeah. They seem like the got, kind of team that would... I'd like to it. see those pants in Vegas. Okay. All right. And that cool death spiral. And that cool death spiral. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's discuss the ice. I get annoyed by some of these Japanese shows. Oh, really quick before we leave yes. um, Detroit. Um, Jimmy Ma. Oh, yes. Jimmy Ma short... still reminds me that he should be on the mathletes on Mean Girls when he does these rap songs. I, I don't know what it is. Something but about you know, his personality. He, he reminds me of the When he did guy. turn down for what, it got the crowd going. And this kind of just like assaulted the crowd and his skating. And it didn't really do what he wanted, especially because he was in a mode where he couldn't really sell it until the final moments. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that one was a bit of a miss for me. Um, and it's, again, not because it's popular, like, uh, unconventional music. It was because it was just the wrong take on it. Yeah. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't something that gets the crowd going. It just went on and on. And the Krosnojan situation, I thought, now, I know he switched camps. The choreography here was infinitely better. Alex Johnson. Oh, good for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, because obviously we love Alex Johnson, but yes. um, that it, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's really wonderful. I thought just in general, the choreographic approach to this program and the kinds of lines he was making were so far and beyond anything he had done before. Now, having said that, like the step sequence... We need Alex Johnson every day now. Now that we he do. Him. And yeah. to do all the skating because um, the step sequence, although he couldn't quite deliver it, as well as it was choreographed, I think. It was an interesting thing. The spins were a little bit bad and he has a shoulder up situation, but it was just nice to see that that kind of program at, at this kind of level. I have so. a theory that Alex Johnson will eventually be coaching and choreographing full time, but he's doing the whole business thing first. We'll do that for about three, four years, and then we'll come back to skating like Paul Wiley and Matt. Yeah, Spire. it would be a shame having seen what, what he's capable of. Yeah, yeah. so. Go make your a little bit of money in business. Work some of those hours. You'll be back to skating. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, they just one would help. Yeah, okay. okay. He needs to do it. He needs to grow up and do it, and then come back. So.
Come back on his own terms, yeah. He can't just be, like, sticking around and skating and Sean rabbiting it. Like, he needs to go out, see the world, and come back, so. Yeah, with that perspective. Yeah. Now, at the ice, Sagitava showed her... I get annoyed with these Japanese shows. They, they show us these news clips, and then we don't get to see the show for, like, another week. And... Right. At the ice is where we start to see the new programs. So we know that Nathan did his new short program to La Boheme, and mm-hmm. that um, Zagitova did her new short program to May Boy. So I want to see the new program. The thi- yeah, the thing about Boheme is there's so much music you can use from it. Like when Patrick did his, he chose some really unusual, almost incidental music from it. So it, it was a bit trite, I thought, okay. the the selections he used. Um, so I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued which parts of the opera they do, because, again, Nathan has the ability to communicate, but usually in a more funky style. So I'll be intrigued what this looks like. Yeah, I will be as well. And I'm just trying to make sure that I didn't just misspeak. I'm getting a little bit tired. And I'm like, it, uh, La Boheme and La Bayadere, Jonathan, can, like, flip in my brain, okay? It's like, B, okay. LB. I'm not really that invested in either. I think it's like, eh, more of the same. Like, But it is Boheme, isn't it? I think I think it is. I'm just doubting myself. I'm doubting myself like a skater. Oh, God. I have doubts. Yeah. <laughs> Such doubt. Okay. Um, but yes, I, I, I think it will be, hopefully it will be good. Hopefully we see more beautiful um, performance from him. So I'm, I'm ho- I think that this could be Nathan's moment because... Look, Vincent, he's going to Brown. I think Vince, I think Nathan it can still be at his peak. And we could yeah. see a really exciting rivalry with Han Yu. I hope that they give yeah. us a full year of back and forth, one-upping each other. So it's great for the sport. I think yeah. it's great for the sport. I know. Yeah. There will be Absolutely. fans will be like, how dare you say they're on par with each other? Oh, whatever. I think it'll be very exciting. and Keeps everyone tuning in. It's great yeah. to see. Yeah. But I want to see the full program. But we did see previews of the Atari program. Oh, my God. Okay, so, Dave, when you put together this compilation. Yeah. Now, because you were, it's amazing, because then I don't have to go looking at everybody's thing. Oh, the insta-skating compilation. Yes. 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 Now, when you did that, did you take, did Danny G already create those? Yes. That compilation within your compilation. I'm not editing anything in there. I'm just putting them next to each other. And that would be if I was Danny G. It's embarrassing. That that would be the last thing I would do because you literally just showed us that you now do the same thing sixteen times in a row. They all start at the center ice. There's pantomime. They all do an angsty circle. There's all pain and longing, and you all do the same pattern. It was so formulaic. How about where the little boy skated forward with the worst skating skills you've ever seen in your life? When yeah. he, like, runs forward. And then, like, reaches. Like, he was, like, alms for the poor. I, I mean, it was it was something and I think... it seemed think... like they were in the order of which they were currently ranked, right? And yeah. In rever- it was... It was really weird, and it showed how limited he is, and they yeah. looked almost, because of the angst, and you know how in Abby Lee, the kids started to look like satanic and over the top the way Lifetime would edit it, um, because they were all doing this choreography that was like the same every week and seemed horrible. That's what this was looking like. They looked it's like stuck children, in a vampire. Children of the corn, or children of Satan, yeah. or like something, there's something really... Wrong. Dark, yes. There's dark, but not dark and necessarily and very rude. dark. Dark comedy, like there's the kids yeah. are so over the top, and it's telenovela. Yeah. Do you know when there's that meme of the woman in the um, leopard shirt that says "gasps" in Spanish is the subtitle for it? <laughs> it's this kind of overly dramatic, but all from the same same beginning position. And then again, I've said it a million times. If you have Costa Naya, what do you do? What are you doing giving her the same stuff as all these kids? They don't seem invested with her. She doesn't have the quads. They seem like she's not in the top yeah. group. They don't And yet when they did that that it's interesting these kinds of competitions they do, but when they were doing that skating drill next she to the She had the runner. best skating skills of the four of them and the most efficient yeah. skating. I know that yeah. there are fans that tried to time it with the seconds. 
Um, look at how they get their speed. Look at how hunchy some yeah, of them are. Yeah, this isn't about just speed. It's yeah. about the power from one blade push that pushes yes. her all the way across the damn ice. Like, yeah. it's just beautiful. Um, look at how ugly Trusova had to skate in order to generate speed. That was right. really telling. Scrappy, short, choppy. Yeah. Like, she got it, but she got it all the wrong way. And I'm sure it's, people will love her doing Game of Thrones because it's Game of Thrones. It's so popular right now. And she's, that seems like the music fits her. But she so. needs that gimmick. Yeah, she's a gimmick and, and skater. So. And this looked like they were all at a gimmick seminar. Yeah. And why would all of these skaters need the same gimmick? I don't really watch know. Watch the beginning of them and then watch Michelle Kwan do her little... <sighs> This had nothing to do with the fact that Michelle is from America, blah, blah, blah. Everyone be quiet. Michelle is a child of God, Jonathan. Yeah, she she was a skater of edges, of lines, of deep knee bends, as other skaters from other countries are like also. Like Sato. And like Costa Naya could be. Like, if you gave Costa Naya those opening movements Michelle had, she would be able to do it. But it was like a palate cleanser to see beautiful held extensions that were just as meaningful and racked just as many points. I'm sorry, yeah. that's not where those transition points are hitting in, in a weird opening choreographic. Yeah, I have to agree with you. I thought that this edit was not a good look for Danny G. But it's... And then he did it himself. That's what's even, I thought, I was like, Dave, you just took all those parts and put them next to each other? And no. it was like, no, he did. He did that. Okay. That, not a good look. Yeah. Good look on Michelle. It made Michelle look great. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's an interesting time, interesting week. And did you see that UCLA is now a part of the college admission scandal with Miss Val? Well, I was hearing some rumblings about it. So because of the like non-competing athlete she took onto the team to like manage with them or something, or mm -hmm. she took them on as walk-ons. And when you're a walk-on. If they know you're going to be on an athlete team, they can get you into a school with lower academic standards, given that if you could maybe contribute to the team, right? And a walk-on maybe do, will do one event, but they were taking people that had never done gymnastics before. And the only thing that, like, look, shady stuff goes on in all sports, right? Especially at schools. But Miss Val has had a whole publicity team behind her and a book, and she's really piggybacked off the fact that she was, you know, helping kids after they had been, um, you know, victims of Larry Nasser, And she really branded herself as like the example of positive coaching and really over blew it. I mean, the narcissism that she displayed this year, making the entire thing about herself at the nationals. And it was all about like, how lucky were you to be coached by her? At the end of the day, it showed that there was some kind of shady shenanigans there, but it's not just these kids. I mean, they had a girl that was a cheerleader on the team in 2001, and her parents owned the D'Agostino um, supermarket chain in New oh, York. Oh, wow. And she learned, a, someone was like, oh yeah, I remember being on the team with her. She was a nice girl who learned a back handspring on the low beam, which is like learning a double sal cow if you are in um, yeah. figure skating. You're like, right. and she got into the school how, and of course they get into the school, they're on the team for one year, and then never to compete again. But... Ms. Val seemed to keep the lie going in the article that was on the LA Times. And this was the niece of one of her best friends who dated David Cohen of Will and & Grace. And either David or Max, I forget which one it was, but she, he dated one of the creators of Will and & Grace and Val would go on the dates with him and he lived with her. And then of course his niece, and she was like, well, I thought she'd be a good vaulter. She just had to catch up on the gymnastics, but she kept it going. And, then, mm. and it just shows you that there's so much with these universities that the NCAA is a huge sham. So there's a lot of this stuff. So it's interesting. I think we need NCAA skating. I think that they really need an well, outlet I, it for seems, these Well, there seems to be a huge market for it. There's a lot of competitors who, who are skating, lost in that mix. But yeah. there's not really NCAA skating. And look, they could do it during halftime at a, at a hockey game. We could do something, right? We could... Mix right. it together. And well, but, yeah, but those collegiate things would just be like uh, Max, Aaron, and Marai wandering over and competing for a second sometimes. Well, I'd like right? to see it, okay? I would too, but I think if you set up something like you're saying, a more formal oh, system yeah. where it was its own division, and I, I think we would be all about that. And I think it would be helpful to the skaters because I think that they need a transition out of competitive skating because there's not really pro skating, although there, 
the war games are coming and we'll touch on that. Um, but I think that they- But for, for a lot of those second tier skaters that yeah. are talented and have great merit, what do they do? And yeah. this this would be a beautiful way to kind of navigate those yes. waters without losing what you had done, but helping transition. There's into something what you really disturbing about skating how there are often there are often like a lack of winners coming out at the other end, right? Like there's right. like what do you go for? And I think if they could do something with college and either scholarships or something like that, it could be a good. Well, maintaining that structure and identity yeah. through skating. Yeah. Yeah. So and while getting education and getting things like that. It could be a positive end to the story. Learning perspective. And hey. <laughs> then our coaches could be a little bit less crazy and insular. More well-adjusted. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it would be beneficial. But there are going to be the Aurora Games that are coming up in August. And as expected, it will be Mariah competing with Ashley for Team USA. And then okay. we know that May Berenice is going to compete there. So it seemed like it was a professional event. But then Alyssa Liu is going to be there. So I wonder if they got sanctioned by the ISU. Is it because Alyssa is not a senior? I don't get how Alyssa Liu fits into this. But <clears throat> she has the And she's competing or she's like doing an exhibition? It seemed like she was competing, okay. but maybe it's an exhibition. But I don't get what the rules are because it seemed like this was a pro event. But then I don't get how Alyssa is there. Maybe it is sanctioned. I don't fully get it. So they must have either paid a lot of money for a small event or it still seems like this is being all together. Yeah, but I think it could be quite a fun event. And it's, there's a tie with ESPN. I think we should support whatever is going on here. I don't know what this is fully. It seems like there's going to be like competitive show programs, more like pro programs. And it seems like Surrey yeah. and Isabel Brasseur are judging. Like Nancy's friends are judging. But I think we should support mm. it, and it could be a hot flipping mess, but also entertaining. So I'm for it. But more things like it kind of need to exist. Isn't yes. that the hope? Is that, yes. that the, And it may take a while to refine their footing in today's era because we've not had something like this in a really long time. Yeah. And we're gonna, have, we're gonna have thoughts on this because our next Patreon video is going to be the ninety four ninety five. Wait, no, sorry, the ninety five ninety six World Pro, and we're also getting ready to judge the two thousand and three Nationals. And Jenny will join us for that. So we've got a lot coming up on Patreon. So we'll have a lot of thoughts about these World Pro events and Nancy because she was at the ninety five ninety six World Pro and didn't have a good attitude about it, and Sandra was quite annoyed with her. So it is going to be the best of commentary to discuss, Jonathan. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yes. yes, as am I. <laughs> yes. So what was your moment of the week, Jonathan? What really stood out to you? Emily. Emily? Emily. Her I'm, presence. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really interested in it. But I also did enjoy following the um, gymnastics. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Ms. Wong. What's her first name? Leanne Wong. I already forgot it. Leanne Wong. Leanne, Leanne Wong was delightful. But I'm really intrigued to watch what happens with Emily. But I was also glad that um, Jessica kind of had her moment too, because I like Jessica Catalan. So it's yeah. nice to see that go well for them. Yeah, and I have to say, I really did enjoy, uh, oh, also Gracie Gold has been getting progressively better on Instagram with her technique and the, the jumps, it's looking better. Um, but I have to say that Danny G video, what a cringe. I couldn't <laughs> stop watching it. I had like, and it was only such brief snippets, and you just you knew it was everything stereotypical that they do all the time, and it was just more of it. And of course, all of like the twelve year old fans who worship all the things of those young were just like loving every little thing of it. It was such a nightmare. I couldn't stop. And again, watching. this isn't about the girls or the ki or the the skaters that were doing it. No, this is about the material being given to them, and it's the same way you know when news people will show a politician saying, "I've never said that." And then they pan to the person saying that exact thing or whatever. Yeah. That was as outrageously obvious as as these mashups to me. Horrific. It was just as inflammatory. Horrific, but I kind of loved it. And yeah. I loved Riley McCusker's bar routine. Okay. <laughs> Drew's triple toe is very beautiful, but I have to say, um, I liked Camille and Drew's program, but Amber Glenn mm -hmm. really going out there with a skater with frizzy hair talking about being drunk in that ugly gray dress. I was, I was 
riveted, okay? I was Leaning riveted. <laughs> wouldn't look away. I'm just, that terrible music that was going on at Skate Detroit. Loved it, hated it. I don't know. It was, it was a mood. So anyway, hold it's an so edge. It's so moody, yeah. <laughs> hold an edge. Look sexy. Bye, guys. <laughs>